for joining us on Forgotten Audible Finds. We talk about some forgotten audible finds, and these are some very important to me and uh, my co-host here, Rob Lee, about, um, because these are really good finds of a group uh, when we first got a hold of never heard of before. But these are so related, so we put them together. We have uh, Michael Gleason's Voices from the Old World. We have uh, 80's Reconstructions. And we have 80 Art of the State. And um, so we'll start with 80 Art of the State. And uh, anybody who knows a bit about a little bit about AD, I mean, it's a to me. If Christian music had like cult bands, <laughs> uh, AD would be in there. And uh, I think a lot of Christian hipsters who are in Christian music would say, "Oh, you've never heard of AD." <laughs> um, yeah, this is this was the aftermath of what happened with Kansas. Uh, a lot of people believe. Um, well, it's basically yeah. what you what you get is is, is from Kansas, um, well not the state, but uh, from the band. The band. Uh, <clears throat> if you don't know who Kansas is, uh, stop what you're doing right now and go Google them, and you know, and even go find some of their music and listen to. It. Um, uh, especially if you're in classic rock, if you're in the classic rock, and you don't know who Kansas is. I'm very sorry for you. Uh, but the the uh, the relationship here is is all Kansas. Um, Carrie Levergren, who started AD, and David Hope were both uh, predominant members of, of Kansas. Uh, Carrie wrote most of the lyrics for Kansas's songs, and I would probably say the lyrics for all their biggest hits. Um, but uh, Carrie. Uh, was also known as um, thinking he used the the uh, moniker professor, and the reason is is because wherever they went, and this is before Kindles and before laptops and before any kind of digital media, he carried this big huge trunk with him, and you would say, well, what's in the trunk? Uh, books. Uh, Kerry went through a period in his life when he was searching. He was looking for answers uh, and so he, when he wrote songs like uh, Carry On Like Wayward Son, Dust in the Wind, if you don't see spiritual connections in those songs, again, I'm very sorry for you. Uh, one of my, actually my favorite uh, by them is Point of No Return uh, and again it's got some very spiritual you know, overtones but at these times he was still looking for answers. And then at some point he uh, was uh, dealing with this uh, band that was not even a big band, but a uh, was kind of just the you know the the, the uh, I guess you would call it the uh, open band. And uh, he spent a long a long time with one of the members in the back of a bus until uh, he realized that uh, uh, everything that he was looking for was in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and at that point then Kerry uh, became a Christian and then he decided to make some decisions at some point. And uh, AD is the result of those decisions. And, and it's a, not an uncommon thing with a lot of the Christian artists at that time that were formerly secular artists. They would come away from that so that they could concentrate more on Christian music and they didn't have to go, oh, I, do we have to do another one of those Christian songs here? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, they didn't want to do that. So they, they, this way they were able to write what they wanted to write, do what they wanted to do so that they could, they felt like they were pleasing the Lord. Well, being a child of the 80s, you know, you really don't know much about Kansas. And so when you, you were getting these albums, uh, you're very surprised that this is a prominent progressive group, you know, during the uh, progressive wave of the 70s. 
And <clears throat> one thing too is their their American uh, band and most of your progressive groups came out of England or Europe. Or They're or European. European. It was like we've got Swedish. You, you're going to have yes sure. and people like that. Pink Floyd even. Well, we throw them in as well. But for me, when we got these, because this was a rare find, these were uh, donated to uh, him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, donated to my cause of, of collecting. Of collecting Christian music, yeah. and and sometimes that that's that's the thing about being a Christian in Christian music. Stuff like that happens. Uh, people will give you albums, and especially uh, this this is it's kind of like this is stuff what we never had heard of because. Uh, stuff. Like I said, you, you get in Christian music, you think of the big names at the time, especially Aiden, Miss Petra, Whiteheart, etc., 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 so on. And those were the big booking touring bands. Uh, you know, it's like if someone said, oh, we're going to have a music festival, let's look at the artists we want to get together and spend all this money. Uh, I myself, you know, when I started, when I had a little bit of money, I was looking in to have a little. Uh, festival at our little Jaton school down here and I looked at some bands I wanted to see how much they cost because at one time that you could get the, the numbers and hire some bands to play and that kind of thing so I looked into stuff like that myself and so in those days uh, you know groups like this they, there was no internet so you're trying to find and then the thing is I think with AD they really didn't want to tour it was a studio project deal and I think too with Christian music you don't rely on singles and radio play. You can get away with just doing studio projects, especially during that time. Um, and I think about some great albums during this time. Uh, Back to the Streets comes to mind uh, during the time of Art of the State. Back to the Streets was Petra's big album. This is uh, brings John Slitz in the picture. Uh, if you look at It Is Finish and a lot of Petra's early stuff, there is a little progressive uh, influence in there. And that's what I love about Christian music is, uh, is when they started bringing in the keyboard players, and they weren't just any keyboard players. And one thing about church, uh, especially ways in the church, is piano players are everywhere, mm -hmm. and some of them are surprisingly good. Uh, and so when you convert them over into the electronic sound of keyboard. Uh, you get some good stuff and one of those is uh, Michael Gleason. Michael Gleason is a great keyboard player so if you add all that stuff and he's a good vocalist as well you add all that stuff you get a good combination of AD. 